everyone, welcome to another edition of Where the 99 Lead, a program brought to you by the University of Pikeville, where we discuss many different subjects and topics in and around the University of Pikeville community. Where the 99 Lead, referring to those historic 99 steps that lead to campus, but also lead from campus into the community and across the world. Today in particular, we'll talk about those 99 steps in a journey into the world. We discuss many different subjects, academics, athletics. Today we talk theater at the University of Pikeville. And Kim Willard, assistant professor of theater, our guest today. Not your first go round here. Nope. Welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> for those that are tuned in possibly for the first time, they don't know Kim Willard. Tell us a little about your background, where you come from, and your arrival and goings on at the university. Okay, well, um, I'm a native of Hudson, New York. Um, give a little shout out to the people in the Northeast. Yes. And <laughs> I arrived here by a variety of means. I taught public school for 20 years, uh -huh. um, music education. I went back and got my master's in acting in New York City at the Actors Studio, and subsequently have arrived here to teach theater and create a theater program where there wasn't one. And you've been in Pikeville now how long? It's five years. Wow seems like yesterday. I know. <laughs> Talk about that. Talk about uh, how you arrived directly to Pikeville. Um, my husband actually applied for a job at Jenny Wiley Theater and we came for his job and then subsequently I ended up at the university and I love it. I'm happy and proud to be a bear and, and we theater, have a good time. <laughs> theater is a popular program. It really is. At the University of Pikeville and one that's in its infancy. Yes. Uh, to some degree. While there have been uh, theater productions over the years uh, now we're talking theater as a, as a uh, subject matter. Right. And uh, you're teaching theater, and I know you're exciting about that because many of our guests on this program have a passion for what they're talking about, and uh, it comes out in a big way from <laughs> Kim Willard. Great to have you here, Thank Kim. Thank you. <laughs> uh, also, you bring with us a student in the theater department, uh, a theater student at the University of Pikeville, Dylan Martin, communication major, but a theater minor. Welcome to Where the 99 Leap. Thank you so much. I'm Dylan, glad you're to an be actor. Here. Yeah, I am. And Surprisingly. You're a, <laughs> you're a communications major. Yes, sir. Uh, let's talk about you academically. Uh, you, you're majoring in communications. What year? Uh, I'm a sophomore this year. Sophomore. Yeah. And what do you want to do in the future? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I think that speaks for a lot of the uh, college students here sure. as well. But I know I, I really like speaking, and I think I've really grown into be a public speaker. I think that might be my forte if you know acting doesn't work out because that's a big a long part of course. It's yeah. a big part of communications. Yes, absolutely. Indeed, Dylan, tell us where you come from. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Uh huh. Deep down south, represent. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I came up here like looking for something else, and then got this. So you know, it's definitely an eye-opener to always keep your you know your mind set on everything sure. instead of just you know narrow-minded from Atlanta to the University of Pikeville tell us that story well I mean I it's really an easy story in my opinion everyone else thinks it's uh, so complex but I came up here on a football scholarship and it unfortunately didn't work out for a lot of reasons and then Kim really is the main person that kept me here because I was on my way out. I was one step out the sure. door for sure. And she's the one that really believed in me and kept me here. So I have a lot to thank with, with Kim for sure. Very good. So came here for a completely different reason. Yes. Found the University of Pikeville for that reason. And now I have found something that uh, yeah. obvi obviously you've got a great love for. Uh, Kim Willard, U Pike Theater, no stranger to the program. You've been here before. We've talked about productions before. We've talked about the uh, new subject matter, uh, the course of study at the University of Pikeville. Today we're going to talk about theater students performing on the international stage. And we've got students today. Dylan just won, and we'll have others joining us uh, on this edition of Where the 99 uh, Lead. But students performing on the international stage. Tell us where this idea came from and why. So it's kind of crazy. Um, I was looking for some, some trip, some way I could take them out of Pikeville and represent Pikeville in a bigger way to, to visit some theater thing somewhere where they can make a mark. Sure. And so I started researching and I talked a little bit to some other professionals that I know in theater and came upon the Edinburgh Festival, which 
The Ed Fringe is now 70 years old. This was the 70th anniversary, the one that we attended. Right. It's the largest theater slash arts festival in the world. Um, over 3,000 plays going on at the same time for the wow. entire month of August. Yeah. And I thought, well, why not? <laughs> <laughs> so I have a playwright friend that I went to grad school with in Toronto and I called him up and said, hey, would you want to write a play for uh -huh. my students? Sure. Would you want to go to the Fringe? And uh -huh. he was like, yeah. So he wrote this play for my students. He first did like some email interviewing with them, got their stories, um, used a lot of their own background and their stories in the play. We did some reads with him on Skype. He did some edits so they got to be in on the process of creating a new work from the ground level. Right. He went with us to Edinburgh, and they had the, the chance to interact with him and work with him there. He saw their work, mm -hmm. and yeah, we did we did this. I mean, this is our show poster from Edinburgh. I mean, this the Space UK was our home for the a week. Farmers lit the fields on fire. Yeah, an original work. Yeah, P world premiere at the Fringe. Jenny Wiley Theater helped us as well. I had Shannon Kirkpatrick Daniels from the theater go with me as our tech. We had technical support from the theater, the costumes and yeah. props and whatnot. So yeah, it was really an international collaboration. Why bring this experience to the students? I think that it's difficult to explain necessarily in words how much travel can change you. But those of us who have traveled, we know that. Mm -hmm. We know there's nothing like seeing how other people do what they do, sure. how other people do their day, how they live, what it looks like, what it feels like. Um, and taking them to the, to the Ed Fringe, they not only saw what Scotland looked like and how those people functioned, but people from all around the world were there. We went to tons of shows. We were able to attend a ton of shows as well. Right, 3,000 plays going on. We didn't go to all of them, but we <laughs> sure went to a lot. Yeah. You had your pick. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We went to a ton of shows. We got to meet a ton of other artists. There were people performing in the streets. I mean, everywhere sure. you went. And we got to perform a show on stage six times in an international venue. Mm -hmm. So We've talked study abroad with many different professors, many different subject matters at the University of Pikeville. One thing that is a common denominator is it changes the students. Absolutely, it changed me. Yeah. And I've gone abroad before. And even if you're going to the same festival next year, different experiences, exactly. different people, it will be different every time. And th they've talked about the importance of uh, study abroad, going abroad, students abroad, giving those opportunities, and that's what U-Pike Theater has done, and allowing them to perform internationally. Uh, why did you choose the uh, Fringe Festival? Because it's the biggest. <laughs> go big or go home. Why that's not? It. It's <laughs> I it. thought, well, let's shoot for the biggest thing there is and just see. Mm -hmm. The worst thing that can happen is they say no. Mm -hmm. First time the U-Pike Theater has gone, uh, not just internationally, but nationally with a, a show. Yes. So you don't start small nope. with maybe a festival that has 300 shows going nope. on at the same time. <laughs> you go to the biggest in the world <laughs> with 3,000 shows going on at the same time. Yes, sir. Add That's a what girl. we did. <laughs> Add a girl. That's how we do things. It, it's the biggest. It's huge. It offers many different opportunities to the students. So yeah. Kim Willard. Great idea, and I can't <laughs> wait to learn more. You're tuned to Where the 99 Lead, a program brought to you by the University of Pikeville. And, uh, Kim Willard, a professor of theater at the University of Pikeville, but also a, a theater minor with us on this part of the show. Uh, Dylan Martin, a native of, of Atlanta, Georgia, now a star on the, the stage. Uh, let's talk about preparing for performances in Scotland. What was that like? It's it goes different with every type of performance you have. With this one, it's a more serious, grounded role, so you really have to, you know, almost dig into your inner demons almost and then, like, find a way to, you know, not make it such a laughing matter because, really, this show isn't a laughing matter. It's very, It should be taken very seriously. Okay. With, of course, its comedic charm, which mm -hmm. we do bring to the table, but it's a very grounded play, and I think that's probably the best way I was able to is to just sit down and just listen to music that really helps me, you know, get myself invested in this character. And right. it's, it's really hard to do on the move because we were, we were literally like walking from our hotel to the venue in like 15 minutes as we were about to go on. 
in that 15 minutes. So sure. it, it's, uh, it's very, you have to keep your head on a swivel basically. And it's just, more than just learning lines. Oh, absolutely. And learning that, lines is probably the least of our worries, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> which we think it's a big deal, but in the end, it's about being able to make the character yours. Yeah. You know? And so that's basically what I did. And that's, we've all learned that from the greatest teacher that we could, we could receive to do this. Cause she's, she's the one that starts it all. Very good. Uh, Kim, the play was specifically commissioned for the International Festival. Tell us why you chose the piece and uh, tell us more about how you worked with this author, a, an old friend. Yeah, Michael and I went to grad school together and I helped him premiere another piece um, at school. I had been in one of his shows. So we've worked closely together. I, I was in one of his shows that went to um, the Samuel French Off-Off-Broadway Festival in New York. So we've known each other a long time. Um, and I, there wasn't anybody I trusted more to write something specifically for my kids. Um, these students deserve the best. Sure. And I want to make sure Pikeville was going to be represented in the best possible way that I could. Right. So he was my first pick. And when I called him, he was right on it. He wanted to go to the Fringe. So we just talked about what would be an ideal piece. It had to be 90 minutes, no more. We had to be able to set it up in 15 and tear it down in 15 minutes. Right. Mm -hmm. So there were a lot of uh, parameters it had to meet. It couldn't have, I didn't want to do something with a lot of characters first time out. So it only has four characters in it. So we took four, four actors and four technicians so that everything could run smoothly. Mm -hmm. It had to be simple and clean right. mm -hmm. and easy to do, not a lot of costume changes. So all of those are, were things I considered as we, we put this thing together. We rehearsed it here during a class and then took it there and, and literally, like Dylan said, we would go in costume from our hostel to the venue yeah. and have to get ready you know, that quick and right. then be out of there in time for the next show to go in because sure. the shows were back to back to back to back. Right. So we developed it just, you know, we both had a passion for doing it and wanting to go and I think that he really enjoyed getting to know our Pikeville students and right. really has a new respect for university actors. Right. Dylan, you and uh, your fellow students were involved in the creative process. Tell us about that. The creative process was always different. Every time we would go and practice this here, we, it would always be different. And she and Kim would always give us different things to look for. She does that with everything that we've done. Yeah. So ever since I was doing our first play, The Crucible, back in 2016, October. Mm -hmm. Yeah, October. Um, it's very different every time you come to the stage. So every time you think you're going to do it the same, it's not going to be that way. <laughs> right. Every time. Yeah. Much like this show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you're tuned to Where the 99 Lead. We're talking U Pike Theater, uh, fresh from an international experience performing in uh, Scotland. And uh, Kim, actors and tech staff were involved in a spring semester course. Uh, preparing for the farmers lit the fields on fire. Uh, tell us how the class was structured to prepare those students. It was structured in rehearsal format. I mean, really, it was more of a rehearsal than a class. We would meet every day and we would begin the day with, you know, what do we need to work on today? What is our goal? What has to get right? What, what risks are you going to take as actors, technicians? What do you need to work on? And then we would do the work till lunchtime, take a break, come back and work again. I mean, we put in eight hour days. Right. And just, you know, rehearsal is minute to minute. You never know what's going to come up or what needs to be adjusted or a costume change doesn't happen. Dylan had a very quick costume change that happened in about <laughs> a foot of space behind a curtain right. and had to be ready almost instantly. Mm -hmm. And so we had to work that thing over and over and over, put that costume on, put it, take it off, put the other one on. Yeah. So those things are, are things that have to be practiced. They sure. have to be right. Even unloading and setting up had to be practiced yeah. so we could do it quickly. So it, it really, I ran it like a professional rehearsal. Dylan, I I've, I've saw a guy once check into the phone booth option for changing. <laughs> okay, check that option. I saw it done. They do so. still have hey. those in Scotland. Yeah. <laughs> honestly, honestly, we could do it. We did in about 30 seconds, yes. didn't we? There yeah. you go. Uh, you're tuned to Wear the 99 Lead. Dylan Martin, communication major, theater minor, our guest on this segment, and Dylan uh, performing on the in international stage. How does that affect you as an artist and as a theater student? Well, as an upcoming artist and actor, it's very different from just doing it in Chrisman or at the local theater sure. down here. 
it really opened my eyes to like how small we are, but how big we can represent ourselves. And I think with that, it made me very appreciative of where I am and what I can achieve and what all we, all we can achieve. So, I mean, I think that's took in a lot for me and it made me become like a better person and a better actor altogether. It made me really find what kind of craft I can make for myself. So. Made you a better student? Absolutely. And person? Absolutely. And actor? Mm -hmm. Well done. <laughs> You're tuned to Where the 99 Lead. Uh, Dylan Martin, our guest on this segment, along with Kim Willard, uh, Assistant Professor of Theater. We'll come back. We've got more. We're talking UPike Theater, but before you go, Kim, one final question. What's next for UPike Theater? I'm glad you asked. I'm making <laughs> sorry I asked. Well, actually, we're doing a, a one-night only performance of The Farmers Lit the Fields on Fire next Thursday, which yes. is the 14th of September at 7 p.m. at Chrisman Auditorium. And then the following, on the 21st, 22nd, and 23rd of September, we'll be doing The Glass Menagerie in Chrisman Auditorium. So I'm rehearsing two things at once. Wow. <laughs> so yeah, that's what's going on. And then Murder Ballads, a, a class that we are doing as a co-class with theater and literature, is going to do a murder ballad original musical coming up soon in November so wow. that'll be fun too <laughs> busy semester yes sir yeah. keep us updated will you mm -hmm. we'll be right back more U Pikes where the 99 lead you'll meet two more students from the U Pike theater program coming up next Welcome back to Where the 99 Lead. We talked to Pike Theater on this edition of Where the 99 Lead, and uh, thanks so much, Kim Willard, with the University of Pikeville Theater. Uh, two more students finding their perspective on the theater productions at the University of Pikeville, the theater minor available at the University of Pikeville. And first, we want to meet Matt Kahn, theater minor, arts administration major. Matt, tell us about yourself. I'm uh, from right down the street from Pipe. Well, I live in <laughs> Allen, Kentucky. I commute back and forth, so <laughs> got to drive every day. But just uh, being here is a lot different than going anywhere else. It was it's homey, and everyone knows each other. Your professors will talk to you when you walk by them, and it's just what drew me to UPIC in the first place. And tell us about your high school, where you grew up. Oh, I went to Prestonburg High School growing up. Um, <laughs> Was in the, I was in the choir there, and we did uh, two shows a year, and uh, just high school. It was high school, but <laughs> this has been a very awesome experience for a university. What year are you academically? I'm a senior. You're a senior. Mm -hmm. You're ready to hit the road. What are you going to do in the future? Uh, I actually graduate this semester, and I'm working on trying to start applying for um, grad schools in theater. So there's three that I've got on the radar. Hopefully I can apply to all three of them and hopefully get into maybe one of them. <laughs> Very good. Also joined by Sarah Hackworth, communications major in theater of mine. Sarah, welcome in. Tell us about Thank yourself, you. where you come from, your background in theater. Well, I'm from Printer, which is really close to Martin. Um, I went to Allen Central High School and we didn't have anything to do with theater at Allen Central. Okay. I came here as a biology major yes. and I took an appreciation of theater class for an elective. I didn't right. even need it and then it literally changed my life and I, now I'm in theater and I'm going to grad school for theater. I'm a senior as well Right. and I plan on going to grad school for theater. So. <laughs> wow. Matt, you've been in other performances at the University of Pikeville performing internationally in Scotland. <laughs> Let's talk about how that compared to the other productions you've been involved in. Well, uh, performing internationally was a whole different uh, ballpark. <laughs> like here, you rehearse in the space and you know exactly what you're going to have and everything. Yeah. So we rehearsed in Christman Auditorium and didn't realize that the stage we had in Christman was not the exact same layout for when we got to Scotland. So when yeah. we got to Scotland, it was figuring out how to change everything and make it work for that space. And then right. it was just learning how to do your process on the run because you had 15 minutes to go from our hostel to our location yes. and pretty much walk in and get dressed and go. Yeah. And making sure you're in the correct mindset to make your character as believable as possible. How tough is it to find the right mindset? Uh, 
It can be hard if you don't know how, like, what your process is as a person, because each character you play, you end up having to do a different process. My sure. character was the kid that was bullied in high school who was like the weirdo, so I would listen to music and make sure that I left like 15 minutes before everyone else did, it was just me and Kim, and would go to our venue and I would sit there and not talk to her. I would sit there and drink whatever I had ordered and people, they would all come later and make sure that none of them talked to me because he was the outcast and I had to make sure that I could portray that he was the outcast and now that all these people have come back into his life, he's still the outcast regardless right. of the situation. Sure, very good. Sarah, more than 3,000 shows, different uh, venues throughout the festival over the course of the month of August. You've got a lot of shows competing for audience and your task with recruiting audience members. Who knows if anyone will show up? How do you recruit <laughs> audience members? Well, <laughs> we had these little flyers just like this one and we would go out on the streets. We spent a lot of our time on a street called the Royal Mile and we would literally just hand flyers to people who passed by. Yes. You said, come see our show, we've got a drama. Like We would have different catchphrases. Some of us would say, world premiere tonight at the fringe like right. just to get people interested sure. and some people j would just walk on by you and not take a flyer and some right. people would like it it was it was fun it was hard but it was really fun it was a really good experience did you have interactions with people oh yeah oh yeah i mean just by handing people flyers we had some people that would actually stand with us and ask us oh what's your show about sure. like we're really interested right like, where's your venue and stuff like that so did they show up for the show yeah we had we had good little audiences very good i'm just curious <laughs> in that type of uh, situation recruiting must be tough because yeah <laughs> you've got to get the attention of mm -hmm. these people that are going to dedicate an hour and a half of mm -hmm. their their life to this uh matt you also traveled to ireland with the U Pike choir I did <laughs> and uh, did you ever think you'd have an opportunity to perform internationally and represent your, your school, both theater and choir? Well, honestly, no, because whenever I uh, went to Ireland with the choir, I was a freshman. We didn't even have theater then, so right. <laughs> I've been here too long. But uh, it, it was great to be able to do it again and in a completely different way because with choir, it's all about the unity and sounding like one voice yeah. as a group of people, which was fun, but with the Farmers with the Fields on Fire, our show, it's you putting yourself on the line and having to dig into your emotions and portraying this character. So instead of having to be one thought and one mind and one voice, you have four completely different people having to show off one story, but they're all four different emotional standpoints. You have like my character who is tries to lighten the mood but can't. You have the serious character, you have the funny character, but they're all in this one world together and you have to figure out how they work together. It's, it was a lot harder actually than, sure. the, than the choir trip was. Right. And the outcast. Oh yeah. <laughs> we could cre recreate that role, Sarah. We could just <laughs> completely ignore Matt from here on. Uh, Matt Conn, uh, a theater minor at the University of Pike Bar guest along with Sarah Hackworth. And uh, Sarah, let's step back in time. You've had other performances, mm -hmm. good old Christmas Auditorium, <laughs> maybe Booth Auditorium. You know exactly what to expect. Been there, done that, spent hours there. <laughs> Go back in your mind to that first step onto the stage in Scotland. What's that like? Oh my gosh. I remember being so nervous, but also, I mean, I didn't really have time to be nervous because, I mean, we were in costume, walking to the, to the venue, and then we were in the actual space backstage, presetting props, and then boom, you were on stage. Like, you didn't even have time to think, really. Right. But I just, it was so awesome. I was nervous, but I was also so excited because, like, I was just, I'm performing in Scotland for yeah. people who I've never seen in my life. Right. They don't know us, yeah. they don't know where we come from. Yeah. I mean, it was insane. Yeah. And it was just, it was amazing because our, all of our adrenaline were like out the roof. So, I mean, it was great. And they all, <laughs> and they talk funny. 
I mean, yeah. Yeah, and they talked about <laughs> that, it. It was great. <laughs> you tuned to Where the 99 Lead, a program brought to you by the University of Pikeville. Today we talk to Pike Theater, fresh from a trip to Scotland, performing internationally. Yes, Pike Theater does that, <laughs> and you can be a part of that. We'll tell you how coming up. Uh, our guest, we talk about uh, their experience in Scotland, traveling internationally, performing internationally. Matt, what was your biggest takeaway from the experience? That's hard to say what the biggest takeaway is because it was just the whole experience overall, really. It was being a part of the creative process for a play, which is a big thing that none of us ever thought knew we would be a part of because yeah. it's like from the first time he thought it up and wrote it, it was answer these questions. And when we read it, it was you can tell which character was supposed to be which person in right. our cast because he had wrote it and like Taylor made it for us. And then rehearsing and everything. I, being able to experience it with like a bunch of people that I'm extremely close with is probably one of the biggest takeaways because it's something I won't forget ever. Right. And being able to look back on it and say it was a great experience and it was fun, but at the same time, we were with our friends and yeah. or our family, really, because we're a theater family. Sure. And <laughs> being able to say we had fun and no one bickered and everyone got along, which is a big feat on, <laughs> on a trip like this. Sure. Sure. And everyone worked their tail off also. It was just seeing everyone come together just to make sure this show was as good as it could possibly be. And then changing the show as we went along because the show we did on opening night in Scotland is not the exact same thing we did the closing night because right. our characters changed as it went along. Kim would say, you should do this a little different because it's not really playing correctly and it would change as it went along. And it was just, I don't know. It was just the entirety of the entire experience, really. Yeah, you've got a performance coming up September 14th. I would imagine that will be different yeah, than I mean, any show you had in Scotland as yeah, well. Yeah, because like the first one that we opened wasn't the same, like the characters completely changed from right. mm -hmm. the Monday to the Saturday. Sure. And we've actually had a longer time to live with them now and mm -hmm. it's going to be, we've not been performing it for two weeks now, so it's yeah. going to be going back and refinding those characters so right. who knows how much they'll change mm -hmm. because sure. you could discover something new about them. Mm -hmm. Right. Sarah, how's this experience affected your outlook on performing and uh, continuing to study theater? Oh my God. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's changed me as a person. And now that I can say I've performed in Scotland at the world's biggest theater festival, makes me think I can get up and do anything that I want to. I mean, and I'm literally, we're known on campus and U Park Theater is getting so much recognition and it's because we went out and we did this huge thing. Right. And it's opened so many more doors. It's, it's amazing. A little more confident now than you were oh, yeah. before, I would imagine so. Matt, tell us uh, how folks can see the show. You've got a uh, one night performance. Yeah, we've got up. a one night only performance. It is Thursday, September fourteenth. It's in the Christman Auditorium on campus, and it's at seven p.m. Very good. Look forward to it. <laughs> Guys, Look thanks to for you being there. with us, Sarah Hackworth, communication major from Printer, Kentucky, and Matt Kahn from Prestonsburg, our guest on this edition of Where the 99 Lead. Thanks so much to our guests during the first segment, Kim Willard and Dylan Martin. You've been tuned to Where the 99 Lead, a program brought to you by the University of Pikeville, the leading university of Central Appalachia.